All right, let's get this situation. All right, what's up guys? Uh, John Harris here again, and just checking in with you on this, uh, let's say Sunday the 8th, Sunday the 8th. Um, I just wanted to check in with y'all in a little bit of a different way for how my marathon prep is going because, um, yeah, I just wanted to do it like that. That's why. <laughs> um, so first off, uh, marathon prep, I feel like is going good. I have about seven or eight weeks, I think about seven weeks left until the race. The race is February 19th in Austin. Uh, yesterday I had an 18 mile run and I really do feel like I was preparing adequately adequately all week, meaning um, I worked out hard, uh, I ate clean, um, I've been avoiding alcohol, I've just cut it out of my diet and uh, don't necessarily need it right now. Um, and, and relatively it's been a great week too. Um, another thing I'm really proud of is my, my nephew. He got recognized for doing great in school this week and- It's just class. My flag football team, uh, they're back together because this is the uh, first, uh, well this month we have our first game at the end of the month. So we're, uh, we've been working in the off season, but they had a little bit of a break for, for holidays. So it feels good to get that back and going. So nonetheless, sorry, a little off topic, but I was just saying that all week, it's been a great week. Um, Friday night I had some salmon. Salmon seems to be my go-to protein the day before a long run. Um, but I think after this past Saturday, I'm going to need to change up what my meal is um, Friday nights. I had salad, salmon, and sweet potatoes um, this past Friday night. And I had, like I said, I had an 18 mile run on Saturday. Um, I normally would drink coconut water the night before, but instead I did cucumber water. I figured there wouldn't be like that much of a drop off um, as far as like the benefits because it's still healthy water. But... Um, just, uh, I, in all honesty, on Saturday, I hit 18 miles. It was 18.2 to be even. Um, I was also a little nervous because my left shoulder was hurting um, for like the three days prior to that. Um, I, I was really, excuse me, I was really thinking that it was due to me carrying like my GoPro, my phone, and my keys, like all my water bottle. Uh, holder and um, even though my strategy has normally been like when I'm running one mile hold for one hand and then switch mile uh, switch hands whenever you you know get to the next mile let me say that again. every mile I change hands that I hold the water bottle that's simple right um, but whenever you're doing like a lot of miles like 18 miles uh, that can be like a whole hour hour and a half if you think about it uh, combined total time of just like the shaking motion so um, I'm really proud of myself because I, I'm pretty sure that I identified the problem correctly or diagnosed it correctly um, earlier in this week. So whenever I went on my runs, I did not run with like a water bottle. Um, I actually went out and bought a Nathan belt. Um, I was a little skeptical on it, but it worked just fine. <clears throat> I ended up just strapping in my water bottle to my belt, even though um, like they sell the ones that clip in. I just didn't want the one that had all the plastic. So. I bought like this one that's more like an elastic band that just holds onto your waist. It seemed to work, work really well. Um, I also put my phone in my pouch. Um, and then come Saturday like morning, I had been nursing my shoulder too and I'm um, putting like Tiger Balm on it. Um, I have my, I have this bad boy, this Theragun, um, or Da Corm, Da Corm, I don't know. It's a Theragun. I got that for Christmas. That's been helping tremendously for me to be able to uh, just avoid injuries. Um, every day I'm foam rolling and then hitting the Theragun and like all the little spots that the foam roll can't get. So um, I also took some like uh, ibuprofen. Um, I think it was like Friday night. Um, and I woke up Saturday and my arm, like it's been great on my shoulder. It's been fine. Um, it doesn't have any pain anymore. And, uh, and even on my run, I was able to run 18.2 miles. I can't remember the, the time. Uh, but I'll put it like right here for y'all or something. Um, it was also really interesting because on my run uh, at the uh, like five mile point, uh, this guy just randomly merged with me and he immediately just like was like talking to me. 
and I normally don't get distracted by other people, but I pulled my headphones out and I was like, what's going on? And while we're running and uh, he ends up being like this ultra runner, uh, real cool guy, his name was Sean. And we, from that point on, we ran together for like the next 10 miles. Um, never done that before, but it was just kind of cool. Um, I just pulled my headphones out, we talked, he gave me advice because he runs like marathons on a regular basis, ultra marathons, and like I shared how this is my first marathon. and. You know, it, just like anybody giving you advice, just like, you know, pick and choose, I guess, what would you think would work best for you. It was also encouraging because um, he was really like a, like 30 pounds lighter than me, 40, 40 pounds lighter than me, than me almost, um, and 20 years older than me. He was like in his 50s. And first off, kudos to him. That dude was crushing it. He was flying. But he was also giving me kudos that he was like, dude, you have so much muscle mass and I can't believe that you're like, you're running at this pace. So that felt really good. I shared with him how like I like to weight train and um, my whole philosophy on like the first half of the week, I focus mainly on like uh, stability and endurance kind of like rep range tra training zones. And then the second half of the week, I kind of lead up to like uh, like hypertrophy type range. That way, still keeping like the aesthetic size of, of my muscle and still being able to like train for a marathon. So we're trying, but Something that I learned uh, really importantly was that, the, something that was really important that I learned that I wanted to share is that at the end of my 18 miles, um, I finished and I realized that I normally park, like, or I do a really good job at like finishing right by where I park. And this weekend, I did not. I'm back and I fucked up. I did 18, I did 18.2 but I parked two miles, three miles away from my finishing spot and I had to walk back. I'm dying, but I'm happy to be here. Slowly recovering. I'll check in with y'all later. I got distracted running with that other guy. We ran like around Austin, like tw twice around Town Lake. And whenever I finished, I was like two and a half or three miles away from my car. Um, not good because I was running shirtless and I was really cold and I got really hungry and I thought that I'd be fine if I just gave it some time, but I ended up like both my quads started cramping and I honestly could only just like pitter patter, like walk like very slowly at like a 10 minute pace. And it took me like 30, 45 minutes just to get back to my car after the run. And the run took like two hours and 45 minutes. And during that time, it was, um, <clears throat> it was, it would have been easy for me to just call an Uber and like take an Uber back. But <clears throat> since the goal is 26.2 for this marathon, and that was only 18, and my legs were already cramping then, I had it in my mindset that I was like, I just want to imagine that this is what it would feel like if I don't hit my goal, if I don't continue to like train on this path and it's race day and my legs give out on me at mile 18, what am I gonna do then, right? Um, and so I made myself just walk, like walk those last three miles back to my car. And it was tough. It, I thought the 18 miles was hard. The walk back to my car was hell. That was the worst because not only was I cramping, but I was already tired. I kept trying to stop for water. I only had my water bottle with me and my phone and like I would fill up whenever I could, but every time I sipped on water too, it just remind, reminded me of how cold I was uh, because I had like a layer of sweat over me. Um, and I know my hands went numb too. And it was 70 degrees out this weekend. So I knew that this was not, these were not good signs. And that um, even though I had like, slept well, I had uh, oatmeal with banana and honey and coffee like in the morning. I had not one, but two servings of my G1M um, BPM products. I had my, uh, uh, what do you call it? My super greens. I also had my intra flight and my flight and my creatine. Like I like was fully confident that I was ready for this. And whenever I like stopped at 18.2 and then was walking back, I did not realize like how unprepared I still was for this. So I really think that um, I just need to add like goo packs and a secondary water source because I was only carrying like one and then I would stop in my car, 
refill, and then like go again. So it got, I mean, it got pretty dark. It got really dark and not like outside, but I mean in my head, like while I was walking back and I'm sure people enjoying their day were like, what's this guy doing? Uh, <laughs> walking shirtless, but uh, I was like so cold that I was like trying to hold my little ranger panties with my fingers and just trying to generate some warmth. And I just kept telling myself that if I even stopped walking, that it, it wouldn't be good. And I need to get to my car because I knew in my car, I had my, my long sleeve shirt, my pullover uh, for warmth. And then I had a half a banana and my post-workout smoothie. They're just waiting for me. So I just kept telling myself if I could just like get there, then eventually I'd be able to like recover, get back home. And I was craving nothing but sodium. All I wanted was pho some beef pho, and it's funny whenever you know what you need because your brain just immediately is like, no, this is what I need right now. And um, it was tough, it was really tough. And I, and I realized that if I don't continue to train, not only smart, but hard, and make sure that my diet is supporting this, then, um, you know, I'll be fine. But this past week too, uh, let's see, I didn't do the average yet, but I started at 194, went down to 194.7, 195.8, 193.1, 191.8, 191.8, and then 191.8. That's the past seven days. And my average last week was 195.7. So I think I also just like cut weight a little too, too aggressively, unintentionally. Um, I've been eating about 2,500 calories a day. I probably need to bump it up maybe like 2,700, 3,000 maybe, but I'm also trying to like run race day closer to like 185, 190, but I just don't want to drop almost a four pound average over the week. So um, that just tells me we got a lot to keep doing. We got a lot to keep learning, but I'm enjoying the process. I'm learning from my mistakes. Uh, the important thing is, is that, you know, God willing, I'm saying pain free uh, really enjoying that and um, really just enjoying the person that I'm becoming in the process. Like I said, um, it's helped me not only get better as an individual, but it's helped me as a coach. It's helped me as a friend. And yeah, I'm just, like I said, just enjoying that. So I'm going to wrap this up now, but I just wanted to share this with, with you all. Um, now I'm from Texas. I just want to share this with you all because I mean, if you're, if you're like me and you've never done something like this, like endurance training this, this far and this beyond, um, I would just encourage you to like take the time to also make sure that you're getting your micronutrients and your macronutrient needs fulfilled, like in your diet. That way you're not getting like lost on a trail and getting like sick or injured or anything like that. Because I mean, even though I got back to my car eventually, got my banana, got my smoothie, got my hoodie on and I, I cranked up the heater, put my heat seat warmers on. Um, it took about 45 minutes for my hands to have like sensation again, to feel anything. And uh, it's not good. I mean, I remember I got back home, I have a stand in like shower and I just turned that hot water on like as hot as I could stand. And I literally just like sat on my bench and just let the hot water rinse over me while I drank a little bit of my, um, I heated up some chicken broth because I was still, I was craving that like soup. And, uh, and I'm the whole goal too, is not only to run this marathon, I want to be able to run a marathon and yes, it'd be challenging, but I want to finish the, or I want to cross the finish line and still be like, I'm fresh, I'm good. So, um, so we have a long way to go. Uh, I would encourage you to definitely, definitely make sure if you're doing anything like this or just on a fitness journey to make diet and nutrition um, definitely at the forefront of your your strategy um, because without it you're just going to set yourself up for failure and you definitely don't want that but I hope that this was helpful maybe you got a little tidbit along the way hopefully you enjoyed it um, be sure to follow my channel that we can stay up to date with not only my journey but I'm also sharing with like shorts on helpful hopefully helpful and informative content um, you can also follow me on Instagram um, but honestly, I just, all I do is talk about workout, football, and my dog. So anyways, uh, thanks so much for watching today. Like I said, hope y'all enjoyed this. Be sure to like and subscribe. Um, that way we can keep the channel going. But this is all I got. So peace, love, protein shakes. Y'all make it a great day.